Hello. In this video, we will talk about the mechanism of action of insulin. We will mainly focus on insulin receptors, intracellular signaling pathways, and some general points about insulin action. Welcome back to nonstopneuron.com, where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Let's get started. As you already know, insulin is secreted from the beta cells of the pancreas through portal veins. This secreted insulin first goes to the liver. Liver has an enzyme called insulin degrading enzyme, also known as insulinase. It degrades insulin and in fact, more than half of the insulin is removed from circulation. The insulin that escapes the liver is then available to act on other tissues. The main targets for insulin are liver, muscles and adipose tissue. That brings us to the insulin receptors. Can you guess where insulin receptors would be? See, the insulin is a polar peptide molecule. So it cannot cross the lipid bilayer of the cell. Based on this, you might now be able to predict the location of insulin receptors. Yes, they are found on the cell membrane. The insulin receptor is a heterotetramer. It has two identical alpha chains that are entirely outside the cell and two identical beta chains that have extracellular, transmembrane as well as intracellular portions. The intracellular domain of the beta chain possesses tyrosine kinase activity. Thus, the insulin receptors are an example of catalytic receptors. Now let's talk about the signaling pathway. First, the insulin binds to the alpha chains outside the cell. This binding increases the tyrosine kinase activity of the beta chains inside the cell. These activated beta chains now phosphorylate tyrosine residues on each other. This is called cross phosphorylation. Now these phosphorylated tyrosine residues attract downstream molecules. Important among them are insulin receptor substrate proteins. Upon binding, they are also phosphorylated at specific tyrosine residues by the insulin receptor. Now these IRS proteins are docking proteins to which various downstream signaling proteins bind and then become activated. IRS1 has multiple such binding sites so that a single IRS molecule simultaneously activates multiple pathways. There are two major signaling pathways triggered by this machinery. One is PI3K pathway and the other is MAPK pathway. Let's first talk about phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase or PI3K pathway. In this, first PI3K binds to phosphorylated IRS as we have already seen. This causes its activation allosterically. PI3K then phosphorylates a membrane lipid phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate or PIP2 to form phosphatidyl inositol 345-trisphosphate or PIP3. PIP3 then recruits and activates phosphatidyl inositol dependent kinase or PDK in short. Then PDK phosphorylates a protein called AKT or PKB. The phosphorylation activates this protein. Now this protein as per the name is also a kinase and there are multiple pathways downstream to this. Eventually, they produce major changes in glucose and protein metabolism in different tissues. For example, in muscle cells and adipocytes, it causes the insertion of GLUT4 containing vesicles into the cell membrane. This leads to increased entry of glucose into the cell. So this was PI3K pathway. Now the second one is MAPK pathway. It begins in one of two ways. Either the insulin receptors phosphorylates SHC or IRS activates a protein called growth factor receptor bound protein 2 or GRB2 in short. Both phosphorylated SCH and activated GRB2 activates SOS. The SOS then activates RAS. Then we have a series of events of the MAPK pathway. We have already discussed this pathway in detail in the video on receptor tyrosine kinase. You can watch it over there. We won't repeat it here. The result of that pathway is increased gene expression and growth. 
So these were the pathways. Now let's talk about some general points. First, the overall effect of insulin signaling is increased anabolic activity and growth and decreased catabolic activity. Second, not all the pathways are expressed in all the tissues. For example, the insertion of GLUT4 on the cell membrane is seen only in skeletal muscles and adipose tissues, but not in the liver. Third point is regarding time delay in appearance of different events. Effects like increased entry of glucose as well as increased entry of amino acids, potassium and phosphate appear within seconds. Changes in the activity of metabolic enzymes take a little longer like 10 to 15 minutes. Much slower effects include changing the rate of translation and transcription that take hours to even several days. So this was all about the mechanism of action of insulin. Now let's have a quick summary. Insulin receptors are receptor tyrosine kinase. Upon activation, first there will be cross phosphorylation of tyrosine residues. Then IRS protein is recruited and phosphorylated. There are two main pathways downstream of this. PI3K pathway that leads to changes in metabolism of glucose and proteins. And MAPK pathway that increases gene expression and growth. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.